guys, welcome to Phoenix Desert View YouTube channel. So today we are going to be learning how to make a butter based red velvet cake. You know, I've gotten a whole lot of requests for that, and yes, I'm finally coming to with that. Now, this particular recipe is a whole lot different from the oil based recipe I have posted up in my membership. The points that you should note before you attempt making this recipe. Now, note that number one, it's a butter based recipe. Number two, the oven temperature is against all of the cakes or most of the other cakes I've made or dots here. It's going to be on the 170 degrees mark, not 180 this time around. Why? This is because it's a red velvet cake, and this kind of cake has that tendency of losing its color whilst it's seasoning. If there is intense heat, or if it's a prolonged, if it has a prolonged stay in the oven. So now, instead of it, instead of the oven mark, oven mark being on 180 degrees, it's going to be on 170. That's about 10 degrees shorter. And of course that means it's lesser heat okay and then the bake time is usually about 30 to 35 minutes you know depending on the intensity of your cake pan because you notice that the longer you see the more you put in the pan the longer it's going to take to bake because you know it has to be distributed evenly as in the heat and all of that now i need you also know that this particular recipe uses cake flour this recipe uses cake flour and so of course you're expected to get a result that is light, well mixed and fluffy at the same time. That's why the fact that it's it's not going to be a moist cake because here yeah, it's a butter cake so of course you're going to be looking out for more fluffiness than moisture but then this has the perfect balance okay that's the first point okay and then when it's time to mix all ingredients together it's always better to mix dry and wet ingredients alternate, alternating that is starting off with the flour or starting off with the dry ingredients adding the milk putting the other batch of the dry ingredients putting the last batch of the milk and then filling it and finishing it with the final batch of the um, dry ingredients this is to ensure that you don't over mix the butter while slapping on a large chunk of dry ingredients into it and then of course you have the tendency of over mixing or toughening out your butter so in doing that you're just going to be mixing just until combined and you already know that the lesser you mix as long as you don't have lumps of flour or anything it will give you a better result if you just stop at the right time of mixing and then of course ensure to cream your butter and sugar well that's the creaming method it's not enough to just pour the sugar and the butter and then add up all the ingredients you need to add that together first or before adding any other ingredients that is because you need to give yourself or try to make up yourself a very fluffy cake because the more your cake is your but your butter and sugar which is like the base for other um, ingredients that will be added as long as it's light and fluffy trust me it is going to give you a better result so let's just go right into it now what i will do now is i will i mean yeah you need to note something a few other note, um, dynamics any good brand of unsalted butter is just fine as seen here i'm using a good brand of unsalted butter this is my already prepared cake flour that i prepared by myself i didn't use the store button i prepared it by myself using the substitute method now I have a video already up in my thread that teaches how to achieve your homemade cake flour as well as other core baking ingredients that you can always find lying around in your home. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing now is uh, this particular cake also carries baking soda. Now this might be a little bit strange because yeah it's a butter cake and I've told you in the past that your know, butter cake are already naturally solid by themselves so they really do need that enhancement or an additional strength now but this time around the reason why you can guess the reason why right? the reason why this has the additional strength now is because it is going to be baked up with cake flour cake flour is typically lighter area and contains less weight so of course you are going to be yielding a lighter textured cake so of course you need something like a 
you know, like an ingredient to aid the structure of the cake as it would if you were working with an oil-based recipe. So let's just go right into it now. So let me give you a quick form of the ingredient. So you're going to be needing two and a half, sorry, two and one over three cups cake flour, okay? That is one cup, I am going to be going two times, and then one over three of the other, of the other cup here, one of the cups here. Going there for the cake farm. You're gonna be needing um one over four cup of the cocoa powder. Any brand is also good. Make sure that it's the unsweetened cocoa powder. So what I'm gonna be doing now is to save up some time as I'm talking. I'm gonna be adding all these ingredients to make sure that we don't waste too much of our time here. So this is going to be calling for one over four cup okay of the cocoa powder because you want it to still be slightly enhanced with that slight of mild chocolatey taste you don't want it to have like just like a bland taste so that is the point where you need just a little bit of cocoa the cocoa powder here right because yeah it's not a chocolate cake but you know how red cocoa is Four cup of that, okay. The next thing is going to be one teaspoon of baking soda. I just talked about baking soda now. So one teaspoon of baking soda. Same one teaspoon of baking powder because you know, baking powder, aside from being being a preservative, it's also a raising agent in your recipe. This is a strengthener. I can and a tilator, especially because there's a white vinegar present. This is one teaspoon baking soda. And then we're having another one teaspoon of the baking powder. Baking powder. And then the salt is going to be half of a teaspoon. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Half of a teaspoon of salt. The salt is basically just to enhance the presence of the unsalted butter. So if you're using salted butter, which I wouldn't even advise anyway, you would have to take out the part where it calls for salt. But I normally never omit that because this is how I can only manage my quantity of salt. I know it's very accurate rather than just using the salted butter that might not give me the result I'm looking for. But here we have this one. Stick everything together. Together with how many teaspoons? Together with um half of a teaspoon of powdered bread syrup. Okay. Because the major ingredient of the cake is going to be in the liquid form, and this is what that is now. Any good brand is fine. Rainers, first class, there are imported brands out there too. They are all just perfect enough to be used to achieve what we're trying to achieve here. Perfect today. This is just an added advantage. This is a red velvet color, see, a red velvet powder color, so it goes into the flour, so there's like a good interaction, I have a bit of red in the dry ingredient, and then I already have the wings activated in the butter, so you are almost 80% guaranteed that you are going to be getting a good result, so what you do now is just give this a quick mix together, and then you just set it aside for the time when you are going to be needing it. So, I hope you guys are following through. Yeah. So, setting this aside now, using it shortly anyway. So, the next thing I'm going to be doing now is, so the next thing I'm going to be doing now is, alright, to get yeah, the um, butter and the sugar and cream for about five minutes until it's actually light and fluffy. So, I haven't measured the quantity of the, um, Butter ahead of time, so I will just do that very quickly. Now, first of all, I've measured the butter, so the sugar. Sorry, so the sugar always goes in first to ensure that it doesn't give a splash when I turn it on. So I'm going to be pouring the sugar in, the and then I'll be using the same bowl to measure out the butter, which is actually 230 grams of butter. It's in here, trying to be sure I'm correct. Yeah. So it's going to be 230 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. This is already perfectly at room temperature. So, 
like I said, any good brand is just fine. But as long as it's doing the work for me, it's okay. I'll show you that this is the front stuff. So it's a 189 now. One eight nine now. I bought 230 grams. Thirty grams of unsalted butter goes in with a one and a half cups of the granulated sugar. I will be turning this on for about five minutes to allow for it to get creamed up and at least slightly fluffy, and then we'll proceed after it's done.
or if you're a girl, you're perfectly ideal by giving me a super thanks using the icon video. Just click on the super thanks icon if you found this video helpful or you feel like you want to like show some appreciation for the, you know, the recipe and all of that. Just click on it and then you need to prompt and you just prompt accordingly. Anything to encourage your girl is always welcome. So stay low, you are almost done. Let's just make this up. baking paper on the bottom side and on round the sides set them I did with two pans so that they can get it well padded and to ensure or help it not to have so much direct contact with the heat everybody knows how tricky red velvet can be to ensure that you do not have brown patches in your cake and to ensure that you don't have brown bottom sides you want it to be red and evenly baked through and through so that is why I'm using the parchment paper and to make sure that I don't have to remember it's a butter cake so so that I don't have to add up too much flour in to dust on the sides and then help it like make it have like a dry side or anything even if the inside is very nice and fluffy so baking with the parchment paper for this particular recipe is going to help it to have like a nice outfit too and too so that's what I keep here so I don't need to powder it anymore as long as I have the parchment helping to do the same work, okay? But I floured it, I buttered it underneath, put the, the parchment, and then I buttered on the top of it too. Yeah. So at this point, I will take this out. Okay. And then, I don't know if it's a coincidence that my real nails complement with the cake and my t-shirt. <laughs> or whatever it is. Just stay close, don't go anywhere. We're almost done because I'll be breaking the video now. Once I pour it in the pan, ensure to heat it gently on your work surface three to four times. I mean, something like that. There isn't any measures to the timing, just make sure you get rid of the air pockets and heat it gently on the work surface so that that will happen. Yeah. So, this side, this all the consistency is like, see. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any crumbs that isn't well distributed with the red color. That's what I'm doing now. Not like just walking into it. So look at what the consistency looks like. Right, so. Okay, so I think it's well distributed. I don't want to get to the bottom and see that I still have some patches. Not 
well distributed with color. So that doesn't seem to be soon now. So at this point now, what we're doing is just to pour it into the pan. Same here. Pouring it now. Just spread it. Just spread it, okay? Okay. And then I will be repeating the same process. So I'm done distributing to the pan. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to be tapping it gently. So, so yeah, this is what it looks like now. This is what they both look like now. So I'll be popping this into the oven. Remember, remember that it's on the mark of 170 degrees, not 180 degrees. So that is already on now. I preheated the oven before I started. Okay, so I'll be popping it into the oven now. And then I would wait for it to bake up for at least 30 minutes to 35 minutes because it's it, it, it had bit deeper than you know what it would have been if it was really flat. So 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, so but it depends on your oven temperature, but that is the benchmark. You'd make sure that before you bring it out of the oven, you're going to have to put the toothpick or the cake tester into the center, and it has to come out clean. I mean, not dry, dry clean, but I mean, clean enough, nothing raw or nothing uncooked coming out. And then at that time, you need to wait for it to, to cool off for about five minutes before you flip it on the wire rack and take out the parchment paper. And then it's going to be done. So I'll be back. So our red velvet cake is ready, and it turned out looking so great. Look at what it looks like. This is the smaller one here, and this is the bigger one. So, like I told you earlier, I waited for it to get a bit cool. You can see this one is already warm to touch because it came out before this one. This is still slightly heated, but I'll need to use a napkin to handle this so that I can wrap up the video on time. So I'll take out this one first of all. So all I need to do is take off the wire wrap and give it a flip. Right, take it out and see what it looks like. So how many people believe that this is? A hundred percent butter recipe, you know, has no single oil in it, and it still looks so moist. And see, so moist, more like it's an oil base. But see, it's hundred percent butter. So I will be putting that onto this pan before I repeat the process. What the sides look like perfectly baked no bone sides or bottoms so i'll set this aside so let me put it with this one so, see this one already came out with the pan of the parchment so let's take all the excess So this is what our cake looks like so i will then go ahead to cut this up now so that we can see what it looks like on the inside and that will be all for the class so as always i always walk through my knife from the middle point like this okay repeat the same process Can you see? Look at the bottom sides. Look at it. You know, it's still really hot, so taking that away. Look at what it looks like. And look at what it looks like right on the inside. So, okay. that will be all for today. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that. You learned, you know, something new, I mean, to just try out and amongst your family, friends, and even as a baker, okay? It's pretty much simple to achieve as long as you follow through with all the steps very carefully and very closely. You're going to be guaranteed an amazing result. So, 
I remain your favorite girl. I don't want to take any further time from you guys. It's been a long one. I hope it wasn't packed full. Don't forget my super thanks. Please use the icon below. Till next time, guys, drop your reviews, your feedbacks, your questions, and whatever observations it is that you have. And I will be very, and I assure you that I will be ready to answer to the questions and to adjust anywhere you think necessary. Stay close, guys. Let's continue to build a network here. Keep subscribing, keep streaming, keep sharing this channel with your friends and family members. And let's continue to build a network here. So, till next time, I remain your favorite girl, your favorite baker girl, Femi's Desert View.